Hello and welcome to Mercedes high performance powertrain facility in Brixworth in the UK. We're here to revisit an old friend, a car that even at a Mercedes facility causes a bit of a stir. As you can see, that behind me is the one of a kind EQXX, a study in hyper efficient electric vehicles. We saw that car in a studio in Germany at the back end of last year and we were blown away by it. Since then, it's done quite a lot of miles. It's undergone some thorough testing and I'm about to go out for a ride with one of the chaps who's done most of those miles to find out what that car is all about in more detail and what they have planned for it for the future. But as well as that, just between us, Earlier this week, we were with Lightyear over in Spain. You know, Lightyear, the makers of the only other hyper-efficient electric vehicle in the world. I'm about to become the only person to have ever sat in both of those cars in the same 24 hours. So yes, as well as finding out what that car is all about, what Merck has planned for it, we're also going to be able to compare and contrast the only two existing examples of hyper-efficient electric vehicles. Let's get cracking. That is the EQXX and this is fully charged. Looking for some sunshine and clean air? Well, where better than Southern California this September? We're bringing all of the electric vehicles under the sun and an array of clean technologies to America's finest city this fall. Yes, that's right. Fully Charged Live USA, powered by Electrify America, is coming to San Diego. So for fresh perspectives, exhilarating test rides, electrifying live talks, and all of your favorite YouTubers, Get your tickets today. Now, before we hit the road, a quick refresher as to what this car actually is and why it matters. Oh, yes. In my recent video on the Lightyear Zero, I expressed my hopes that that incredible car and its dedication to efficiency might trigger a fundamental change in modern car design. The EQXX is a promising sign that that may actually be happening before our very eyes. It represents the first public exploration into extreme efficiency by a legacy car brand, and while it will likely never see production, the learnings drawn from it will, we are assured, inform the next generation of electric Mercedes vehicles. So let's hear a little from my new mate Boris, who works in Mercedes' experimental concepts division and is one of only a handful of people permitted to drive this priceless car. The first trip was like um, we were in Spain on a test track for uh, testing all the systems and adjusting the powertrain and even the low volt system efficiency. Um, so we made a very efficient car where we had a, like our uh, Mission XX called the drive from um, Zinnelfing in Germany um, down to Cassis in southern France. This was um, a little bit more than 1,000 kilometers, um, and we did it with a consumption of 8.7. To clarify, that's 8.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, or as I prefer it, seven miles per kilowatt hour. That's a full mile more than the astounding six miles per kilowatt hour efficiency of the light year, and comfortably double the efficiency of the average electric car that you can buy today. So how does the EQXX achieve those numbers? Well, back to Boris. So um, beside the powertrain, of course, um, also very important is the aerodynamics because two thirds of the resistance is, uh, or goes to um, the, the wind resistance. Mm -hmm. And second, um, the, the lightweight of the car. So with 1.75 tons, um, the car is very, very lightweight. Uh, rolling resistance itself, so the wheels, but also the 12 volt, so all the comfort and um, general base um, systems are also um, brought down to the very minimum. So for example now um, we got a solar roof on top and that means we can um, collect the energy from the sun without any need from the uh, HV battery. So all the energy in the high voltage battery uh, can be used for driving. Um, it's worth noting that that, that, that weight figure it is, it is very light for an electric car, especially considering this is not a small battery, is it? This is a 100 kilowatt hour battery? It's a 100 kilowatt hour battery with a um, weight of 
488 kilograms. An interesting thing about that battery is it's not cooled, is it? It's, it's passive cooled, so um, also for saving weight and you can make it very slim, which is also very good for uh, low center of gravity. You feel this while you're handling the car. There are a couple of other features on the EQXX that are simply too cool not to mention. Personal favorites include the extending rear spoiler, which deploys at speed to elongate the car's teardrop silhouette, making it even more slippery as it slices through the air. Equally space age are the glass fiber reinforced plastic springs, which aside from being so beautiful they could sit in a gallery, are 75% lighter than normal steel springs. But if you like lightness, the most staggering component is the battery itself. It's a 100 kilowatt hour whopper, yet it weighs just 488 kilos, less than half a ton. That's thanks in part to state-of-the-art silicon anodes, but also thanks to the lack of any inbuilt cooling. Instead, the battery is simply cooled by the air that passes underneath the car. Speaking of which... When we made a video last year, a lot of people in the comments were like, that's never going to work. You've driven it thousands of kilometers. Yes. Any problems? Uh, not at all. So um, we did a, a second run to prove that we can do it again. Um, we drove from Stuttgart, Germany um, to our colleagues um, from AMG Petronas and we still had so much energy. We took um, Nick de Vries, the Formula E champion, mm -hmm. um, went on the track to Silverstone and did a lot of laps, also pretty performant and we reached a number of 1,202 kilometers. So we um, beat our own um, record and did it with 8.3 kilowatt hours. 1,200 kilometers. But it still has some power, so if we push the pedal. Ooh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so it's a single motor drive, yep. also because of weight and rolling resistance. And yeah, every single thing on the um, motor is developed together with our um, experts from Stuttgart and also here in England from Formula One and Formula E. Because when this car was first shown to me, they were calling it a thousand kilometer electric car, but it hadn't done any driving yet. So actually it, it's exceeded the expectations of what it was capable of. Correct. So what have we learned from this car? Well, let's start with the efficiency figure because just, just now, during that little drive, we achieved seven kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. For context, the light year zero, when we were driving yesterday, we were pulling about 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which again is insanely efficient. And the difference there, I think, is that the light year is basically a production ready car, which means there are budget constraints, even if it does cost a, cost a quarter of a million. Whereas this, this is a pure test bed. They are carte blanche with the budget so they can go all out on absolute maximum efficiency. It also strikes me that it is a very Mercedes approach to a hyper-efficient EV, which is to say it looks beautiful. It's got quite a nicely finished interior featuring all these gorgeous yet vegan materials. And it's also bloody fast. He put his foot down a few times, it goes. I was not expecting that. Interesting, by the way, that they've gone for a single rear motor setup versus light years four in wheel motors. That's one of several key differences between the two cars. The other, of course, is that Merck have gone for a hulking great 100 kilowatt hour battery, whereas the light year settles for a 60 kilowatt hour unit. Important to remember that light year zero, actual car that you will actually be able to buy later this year. Therefore, there are compromises. That's not to say it isn't incredible because it is. It's a showcase of what is possible right now when you have absolutely zero constraints and only one goal to go really, really, really far. Now, we're not gonna see that car going into production ever, but what we will see are various components from that car, like the, the lighter, more energy dense battery, like some of the aerodynamic design features trickling down onto the next generation of Mercedes EVs. This is good news. I've been saying it since I drove that light year. I am praying 
that this next era of EVs have a much bigger focus on efficiency because efficiency makes electric cars better. And what we have here is the first sign of an OEM also taking up that same mindset. Mercedes is the oldest car company in the world. If they are beginning to clock onto the fact that electric cars should be a bit more efficient in the future, hopefully we're about to see a domino effect now where all the other car brands come to the same conclusion and stop building big blobby SUVs. Call me an optimist. So there we go, a fascinating day, a fascinating couple of days. Mercedes EQXX on British roads. How about that? Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thanks for watching.